We're going to be working on solving equations with fractions in them. Okay? So here's our very first example. We have the number 6 is equal to 1 third times 8 plus x. Okay? So we have a fraction here, and it's outside of the bracket. And when it's just beside the bracket, we know that means to multiply. This is that distributive property we worked with before, which means I take that third and multiply it by 8, and I take one third and I multiply it by x. So let's do that on the side. Let's do it in green here. One third times 8. When we're multiplying fractions, it's easiest when both are fractions. How do I make 8 a fraction? Logan? Yeah, we put a 1 under it. Okay? And then with our rules of multiplying fractions, what do we do? That's right. Numerators by each other and denominators are top by top and bottom by bottom. What is 1 times 8? And 3 times 1? Okay, so it's all positive. So the left side of our equal sign did not change. The first number we did are, is 8 over 3. And then in our second example, I guess we'll do it in blue here, 1 third times x. Well, let's make x a fraction. How do I make x a fraction? x over 1. Okay. Let's multiply. What's 1 times x? Yeah, or, or just x, right? You can just write it as x. And what's 3 times 1? There we go. It's positive. So we put our plus sign, x over 3. Great. Now, I'm going to show you a trick to make this a little simpler. When we have a variable on top, we really can't do any combination. But this is adding two fractions. Are the denominators the same? Yes. Yes. So I can simplify this by putting them both over just the number 3. So I'm not going to change anything but the way it looks. Okay. We're going to put them both over the denominator 3. Okay. So I don't have to have them separate. But I'm going to put 8 plus x on top. Okay. And this is the exact same idea. Imagine we had um, 2 over 5. So this is just a small example. 2 over 5 plus 1 over 5. Well, I could rearrange that question to say 2 plus 1 over 5, right? Because we know when we add or subtract fractions, the denominator is going to stay the same. So I can just write it this way, which we've just done here. The only difference is I can simplify 2 over or 2 plus 1, where I can't simplify 8 plus x. Okay? Now that I've done this, it makes it easier for me to get rid of this fraction. This fraction also means division, right? And we want to get the x by itself. That's what we're trying to do. The original goal was to isolate for x. So if I want to move this 3, that's on the bottom of the equation, to the other side, what operation do I need to use? Multiplication, because it's division here. So when it comes over, we have to use multiplication. So this will then say 3 multiplied by 6. Okay. The 3 is gone on this side, so all we're left with is 8 plus x. I still have room. I still have room. Good. What is 3 times 6? 18. So we have 18 is equal to 8 plus x. We have to isolate x, so what do I have to do here? I have to move what? 8. And when it goes to the other side, what does it become? Yeah, right? Because it's positive over here. So then this will then read 18 subtract 8 is equal to x. Okay, and I'm kind of running out of room. I'm going to move this down just a little. But what will x equal in the end there? That's right. 18 minus 8 is 10. So we have x is equal to 10. And let's go through that process again. Now, if you look, this question here is actually done part of it for us. It's all over one denominator. So let's get rid of the fraction. It's usually easiest if we're working with only whole numbers. So if I'm going to move this 4 to the other side, that's right, because it's a division sign over here. So to move this 4, it needs to be multiplied on this side. So we keep our original 7, and it needs to be multiplied by 4. Everything else, the top of the rest of this fraction, stays the same. It's still 3 times y minus 5. Okay? We've got rid of our fraction. What's 7 times 4? Great. So let's simplify that. 3 times y minus 5. What would be my next step here? 3 times y and? Yeah, that's right, our distributive property. We take this 3 and we have to distribute it amongst the numbers. So, 
3 times y will be what value? 3 y. And 3 times negative 5 will be what value? Negative 15. Okay. This is much simpler, like one of the questions we originally started with. What do I want to move first, the 3 or the 15? Yeah. I could move the 3, okay, and I'm going to quickly talk about it. If I were to move the 3, what would I have to do? Divide by 3, but I have to divide everything by 3. I know we do the trick by just moving it over. If I did that, this would be y, this would be 5, and this would be an awkward number. Okay? So we don't want to do that first. Let's move the 15 like we said. So let's move that 15 over. When we move 15 over, what will it become? Positive. Good. We're still left with 3y over here. Is equal to 28 plus 15. What is 28 plus 15? 43. Okay. Which is equal to 3y. And now you get y by itself. That's right, because there's a multiplication. When it comes over, it needs to be division. So y will be equal to 43 over 3. And what's 43 over 3? Some decimal. Okay? And that's fine to leave it in a fraction form. I'm going to leave it like this. I think this is more than acceptable as an answer. Right? 